morning. Welcome to Easter 2020. I'm so glad that you've gathered with us today. Not typically the way we would choose together, but we're here and and God is moving and stirring. I've been reminded that although uh, no congregating these days, we are still celebrating. And we hope today that you'll join in, that you'll gather around wherever you are with your family and we will celebrate the reality that Jesus emptied the tomb and we have hope in him. God bless you. Enjoy this service today. Two, three, four. Hear our songs to you when we dance, fill us move to you when we laugh, fill our smiles with you. We lift our voices louder still. Can you hear us? Can you? We love you, Lord. We love you. We love you. We love you, Lord. We love you. We love you. When we sing loud, hear our songs to you. When we dance round, fill us. To you, we laugh a loud, fill our smiles with you. We lift our voices louder still. Can you hear us? Can you feel? We love you, Lord. We love you. We love you. We love you, Lord. We we love you, we love you. We love you, Lord, we love you, we love you. We love you, Lord, we love you, we love you. Our love is big, our love is loud. Fill this place this love now our love is big our love is loud fill this place with this love now our love is big our love is loud fill this place with this love now our love is big our love is loud fill our lungs sing it now we love you Lord, we love you, we love you. We love you, Lord, we love you, we love you. We love you, Lord, we love you, we love you. We love you, Lord, we love you, we love you. We love you, Lord, we love you, we love you. We love you, Lord, we love you, we love you. We love you, Lord, we love you, we love you. We love you, 
Lord, we love you, we love you. Everyone needs compassion, a love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior, the hope of nations. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save, He is mighty to save forever, author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave, Jesus conquered the me as you find me, all my fears and failures, come and fill my life again, I give my life to follow, everything I believe in, now I
worthy of every song we could ever sing worthy of all the praise we could ever bring worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. every other name Jesus the only one who could ever say worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you oh we live for you It is Easter morning, but there's certainly nothing uh, traditional about this day. The parking lot is empty. The pews are empty. For the most part, the platform is different, is different and empty, and we're in, we're in a different setting. Traditionally on this day, uh, most of us would spend time to linger at the tomb. Uh, that makes sense. Easter is about the resurrection, is about Jesus coming out of the tomb. And, and while that would be a glorious thing to linger at today, a place to linger, I believe these times, this particular Easter morning, requires us to linger somewhere else. Instead of lingering at the tomb this morning, I want us to linger at the throne I want to remind you today, before Jesus ever was laid in a tomb, 
he was uh, sitting on a throne. And I want to remind you today, before Jesus, after Jesus uh, emptied that tomb, he returned to a throne. I I believe today it would do us well to spend Easter 2020 at DeSoto Hills Baptist Church, the family of faith here, lingering around the throne. Many of you know where I'm going. The passage, you know where I'm going. It, It is a familiar passage. For me, it is a foundational passage. In fact, when I preached for my first time in DeSoto County 22 years ago, I preached from Isaiah 6. Isaiah 6 says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Around him were seraphims, each having six wings. With two wings they covered their face. With two wings they covered their feet. And with two wings... They were flying. They were crying one to another. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. And at the sound of their voices, the pillars in the temple shook and the place was filled with smoke. Let me tell you why I think it is imperative today that although it is a day that we rejoice in the empty tomb, We need to focus on the full throne. Uh, Three things about that vision that Isaiah saw that I want to briefly remind us of today. Number one is this, the context of his vision. Isaiah is very careful to, to tell us when he saw this vision. It was in the year that King Uzziah died. I think it's imperative for us this Easter Sunday to linger at the throne, to see what Isaiah, the one that Isaiah saw, to to focus on the presence of our Lord on that throne because like Isaiah, it is a time of change for us. Isaiah saw the vision of the Lord and it was a time of change. It was for many of them unprecedented change. Uzziah had been on the throne for 53 years. Some of those folks had never known any other king than Uzziah. And yet now, Uzziah was dead. This is an unprecedented Easter for so many of us. Some of you have never failed to be inside a fellowship of believers gathering with him on Easter of all days. And yet, today... It is an unprecedented Easter for us. And like Isaiah, we need to see the Lord in your living room today, in your den, in your kitchen, wherever you are watching this service today. Like Isaiah, you need and I need a fresh vision of the Lord because it is unprecedented, unprecedented, unprecedented change. But let me tell you a second thing. It is, it for Isaiah, it was not only a time of unprecedented change. It was a time of uncertain change. They knew who was taking the throne, who had probably already taken the throne, perhaps by the time Jotham. But here's what was uncertain about it. What kind of king would Jotham really be? What kind of changes would come for the better, perhaps for the worse? Judah was certainly no stranger to kings and different kings. And and in their history, they had had some good kings. They had had some bad kings. They had had one even terrible king. The last three kings through Uzziah had been what would be labeled fairly good. Not really bad, not really good, just, but fairly good. And Judah must have been thinking, and Isaiah must have been thinking, what kind of king would Jotham be? History tells us that he would end up following in the steps of Uzziah and other kings before him, he would fall in the fairly good category. But Isaiah didn't know that, and the people didn't know that. So it was a time of not only unprecedented change, it was a time of uncertain change. And for you and I, the days are still very uncertain. When will school start back? We don't know. When will things begin to flatline? We don't know. When will we be able to gather back in this place to worship together? We don't know. It's uncertain times. But what we do know 
is what Isaiah was reminded of that eventful day. He saw the Lord seated on the throne, high and lifted up. Unprecedented change. Uncertain change. But let me tell you the third thing. It was a time of unproductive change for many people. I trust that these days of change will teach us and will grow in the grace and knowledge. But Isaiah was preaching and teaching and ministering and prophesying to a nation that was not being very receptive to any of the changes, the good, the bad, the changes that God was trying to bring on their own hearts. They were not being receptive to that. And so the context of this great vision in which Isaiah saw the Lord was a time of change. Second, the content of his vision. What did Isaiah see? Let me tell you three exciting things about what Isaiah saw and what with our spiritual eyes we need to see today. Number one is this. The elevation of the Lord's throne. I saw the Lord high and lifted up. I'm telling you what today the Lord is seated on a throne high and lifted up and there is no throne above him. There is no power. There is no principality. There is no pestilence that is higher than the throne of God Almighty. And today I want you to know there are so many things that are uncertain in these days, but one thing we can know that Isaiah saw the Lord high and lifted up, the elevation of his throne. We're living in a world where it seems that evil is personified. And if it's, not, uh, if it's not personified to being greater than good or greater than light or greater than righteousness, it is on uh, the same level with it. Many of you are Star Wars fans, and I am too, but one thing that always troubles me about Star Wars is this battle between uh, the, the dark side of the force and uh, the good side, the light side of the force, and always those two battling it out, and who knows who will ultimately, but let me tell you what, today there is no doubt who is on uh, the top of all things, and that is the Lord God Almighty, and I guarantee you this, that the virus will never touch him, and the reality is that nothing can separate us from him because he is high and lifted up today, and so the context of this uh, uh of, of this great vision is that it was a time of change, but the content of it in the midst of that change, one thing was certain, the elevation of his throne. But let me tell you a second thing that is so encouraging, the relaxation of his posture. Isaiah saw the Lord high and lifted up. Do not miss this, seated on the throne. I think that is so significant. Because Isaiah might have been, and the other people might have been, uh, pacing, uh, troubled. And, and maybe during these days, you're having trouble sleeping because there's some anxiety about uh, what's happening. And, and, and maybe the greatest anxiety you have is, is the toilet paper going to last in your house? Are you going to be able to find milk? When will the kids get back to school? When will things get back to normal? And so maybe in your life today, in my life, there's some anxiety about these days. And maybe, uh, I don't know about you, but when, when I'm anxious, I don't tend to sit down. I tend to pace. But that day when the Lord revealed himself to Isaiah, he was seated on a throne. It is a calming reality. That although this virus may have caught most of us off guard, and even in ways the global community, and let me encourage you in these days, stop. If you're guilty of pointing the finger, stop pointing the finger. These are difficult times and a virus that is very unpredictable in ways and took a global community off guard. But let me tell you what. Nothing takes the Lord off guard, and he is not wringing his hands. He was not wringing his hands then, wondering what kind of King Jotham would be. No, he was seated on a throne. He was trying to give Isaiah, through this vision, a confidence that, Isaiah, I am still on the throne, and I am seated on this throne. And today, let me tell you what, I don't know what the days, as the old song says, I don't know what the future holds. 
but I know who holds the future. I know who holds my future and your future today, and that is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And today, this Easter Sunday, he not only emptied the tomb, but he fills the throne. And he is seated today in great confidence. And I pray that you will not trust in your own understanding. You will lean not in your own understanding, but you will trust the Lord this day and find your confidence in him. I I, I tell you, the content of this great vision is that he's seated on the throne, that that throne is high. So the elevation of his throne, the relaxation of his posture. Third, the proclamation of his angels. These angels around the throne tell us something by what they're doing, by what they're saying, and by what they're causing. What they're doing, they're, they're, they're covering their faces, they're covering their feet, they're flying. and In other words, they, they, they have a great reverence for the Lord. And angels are, are great angelic beings, but, but even in the presence of Almighty God, because he is so other than anyone else, anything else, that they cover their faces. I have often reminded you that uh, although most of us love the great uh, Christmas classic with Jimmy Stewart, It's a Wonderful Life, in that story of It's a Wonderful Life, Clarence is kind of his guardian angel, and and, and Clarence is, is trying to help George out because Clarence wants to earn his wings because he wants to be an angel. Let me tell you what, you are not destined, nor am I destined to be an angel. You are a child of God, and because you're a child of God, you won't have a set of wings. You won't need a set of wings because you don't have to cover your face in his presence because you are a child of the king. Today, they tell us something about what they're doing. They're with, with three sets of wings. With two, they're covering their faces. With two, they're covering their feet. With two, they're flying. They tell us something today by what they're saying. You're familiar with this passage. They are saying these words over and over again. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. You would think there are two great attributes of God. We know that from the scripture. God is holy and God is love. I have often thought you would have thought that in this passage, in this vision, that, that the angels would be, one set of angels would be saying he's holy and one set of angels saying he's love. And they would go, holy love, holy love. That you, you would have thought that's, but they're not doing that. They're only saying holy, holy, holy. And then several years ago, I think it hit me why in this vision, They're saying holy, 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 because holiness, while God is love, he is also holy, but his primary characteristic is holy for this reason. Have you ever had somebody tell you they loved you only to come find out they really didn't love you or they didn't love you for long? I love to tell the story of one of my first really kind of loves in high school was a little girl who was in the band with me, and her name was Tracy, and she was such a beauty, and she had long hair, big brown eyes, and uh, I got up the courage to ask her out and to ask her to go with me. We did that back then, to go with me. Didn't involve much going anywhere, but we were a couple. And she agreed to go with me. And, and so we became a couple in band and stayed a lot together on, on the trips and, and all those kind of things. And then there, there, there came a day when I just had to tell Tracy how I felt about her. And I said, Tracy, I love you. And she said back to me, James, I love you. And oh, how elated my heart was only to find out three weeks later, that she really didn't love me. She really loved my best friend. Broke up with me. Started dating my best friend. All of you have stories you can relate to that same thing. Here's why it's so important what Isaiah hears from the angels. Holy, holy, holy. Because God is holy, You can be guaranteed when he tells you he loves you, he really means he loves you. It's not a shallow kind of love. It's not a 
spontaneous kind of, it, it's not a sporadic kind of love. It is a, it is a substance kind of love. For God so loved the world and the the content of this, the angels are telling us something about the heart of Almighty God and about how he does not change. He is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. Isaiah and Judah was looking at some kings. There would be good kings. There would be terrible kings. There would be bad kings. But God Almighty is the righteous king seated on a throne, and he does not change. He is holy, holy, holy. They tell us something by what they're doing. They tell us something by what they're saying. But they tell us something by what they're causing. (laughs) What they're causing is kind of commotion. It says that the sound of their voices, uh, the the doorpost in the temple uh, shook. And at the movement of their wings, they were stirring up the fires uh, in in the temple. And and so smoke was, was filling the place. Here's what's significant about that. God didn't bring Isaiah to heaven that day. God didn't take Isaiah from the earth and take him into heaven to give him a vision of who he was. No, no, no. Far better than that. On this eventful day, as as Isaiah made his way to the temple, perhaps for just another day of worship, a traditional day, of worship on the Sabbath. On this eventful day, Isaiah didn't go to heaven. Heaven came to Isaiah. And the reason the doorposts are shaking is it's literally the temple and the presence of Almighty God is literally in the temple that day for Isaiah. And, and the reason the smoke is being stirred up because it's the literal fires that are burning in, in the in, in altar and places like that. And it's causing that great commotion because... Isaiah didn't go to heaven that day. Heaven came to Isaiah. On Easter Sunday, we are reminded that God Almighty did not wait for us to somehow get to heaven. But through his son, Jesus Christ, heaven came to us. And the reason we can linger at the throne today is because of the tomb. The reason we can linger around the presence of Almighty God this day and every day is because of the tomb. When Jesus died, the the veil in the temple that separated the holy place from the most holy place, where only once a year a priest could go in and make sacrifice, only once a year could he go into the Ark of the Covenant, where the Shekinah glory of God, when Jesus died on the cross, when he said it is finished, the scripture tells us that the veil that separated the holy place from the most holy place was ripped from top, from top to bottom. And we now have access to Almighty God. We're able to linger at the throne today. We're able to glory in the throne today because of the greatness of the tomb. The content of this vision is that the elevation of his throne the relaxation of his posture, and the proclamation of his angels. They tell us something by what they're doing. They tell us something by what they're saying. They tell us something by what they're causing. But let me tell you one final point today. The consequences of this vision. When Isaiah saw the Lord, two things happened. His head went down and his hand went up. His head went down. Woe is me. I am an unclean man. I, 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 I live among an unclean people. And the Lord had the angel come and touch his uh, mouth with that coal and remind him that, that what God hath cleansed, what God hath purged. And so, but, but there was a brokenness. And, and this Easter Sunday, in, in the midst of all that is going on, as, as we gaze upon the wonder and glory of the throne because of the tomb, there ought to be a brokenness, a gratefulness in our hearts. There ought to be a woe is me. Our heads ought to go down in brokenness, in sorrow, in heaviness because of what our sins cause Jesus to have to do. 
a heaviness that doesn't linger there, but as a heaviness that is an awareness on this Easter day that we were the reason Jesus went to the cross. But a second thing happens. His head went down, but his hand went out, up. Not only is there a brokenness that comes as we linger at the tomb, but an eagerness. The Lord says, who will go for me and, and who will I send? And Isaiah says, here am I, send me. What I find fascinating about that, the Lord doesn't use Isaiah's name. He doesn't give him an engraved invitation. He does not even tell him what he wants him to do. He just says, who will I go? And who will I send? Who will go for me? And Isaiah says, here am I, send me. Why? Because he has seen the Lord. On this Easter Sunday, it's not traditional in so many ways. But one thing is as true this Easter as it was last Easter. Is our focus upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Who not only went to the tomb, but before he was in the tomb, he was on the throne. And after he was in the tomb. He went back to the throne. And this day he is seated on a throne high and lifted up and his train fills the temple and he is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. I don't know what the future holds, nor do you, nor do the experts even, nor do the politicians. But one thing we know this Easter day that was true last Easter and will be true this Easter and will be true in 2021. We know who holds the future. He is the Lord God Almighty who is still seated on the throne. Lord, thank you today for stirring my heart to move from a familiar passage to remind us this day that you are still seated on the throne. May we glory in that, not just today, but every day. May that give us strength and steadfastness, a smile on our face and a spring in our steps in the midst of this pandemic. May there be a joy that is unspeakable because we know who the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords truly is. For it is in your precious and holy name I ask it now. Amen. We love you, Lord. We love you. We love you. We love you, Lord. We love you. We love you, Lord, we love you, we love you. We love you, Lord, we love you, we love you. I want to fall in love with 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 you. I want Fall in love with you. I want to fall in love with you. I want to fall in love with you. I want to fall in love.
Thank you for worshiping with us today. If you need us, if you've made a decision uh, about the Lord, we'd love to hear from you. You can contact us. The number is at the bottom of your screen, also our website. Uh, That's where you can uh, contact us, and we would love to hear from you. I want to thank uh, so many people are helping us provide this service. I'm, I'm so grateful for the praise band who shows up to help us, for Chuck Roberts, who's running our sound, for Grant Stegall, who's running our cameras, for Mark Lewis, who's doing all the editing and bringing this service together, not only musically, but uh, t- with the technology aspect of it, for Jennifer Lewis, who's keeping our web page up to date. Uh, those people are just really helping us out during these days, and I'm so appreciative of that. So many of us you see in front of the camera, but there's a host of people working behind the scenes that's helping us. And so uh, pray for us as we continue to minister in these uh, different kind of days that the Lord will be glorified. And as always, I remind you, in Jesus' name, we press on. Thank you.